know that you are the first ever president of NTMS or NTIMS, but what made you want to start the MS in the first place? When I went to university, my father just passed away. Okay. Uh, he passed away when I was in uh, first year. So I was a bit of a recluse. I didn't uh, enjoy very much the kind of fun things that people do uh, in university. Mm. At the same time, I'm also a sort of a natural organizer. I like to organize things, I like to do things. And I find that the comfort in religion, particularly when my father passed away, and to organize around people, people around religion. And uh, saw that in uh, NTU, NTI then, uh, there were a number of us who uh, could come together uh, for a common cause and I thought religion would be that cause and therefore uh, uh, proposed to my peers why don't we come together and uh, form the NTI Muslim Society. Uh, it is easier said than done because in those days we did have many undergrads uh, studying in NTI. Uh, in fact, if we, even if we have enough in the grad to convince enough people to form the society, we should require no more than 10. It was mm -hmm. so difficult. So it was not until I was in my third year that uh, I finally got enough people to come together and say, let's form an association under NTI and uh, get people together and then decide what we will do later. At least we get together and then uh, hopefully uh, find some ways and some excuse to be together and on that basis, uh, at least on, on religion and we hope to coalesce people together on that. So how do you rally uh, your members together? How do you try? To one, at one at a time. One at a time. So what, what do you tell them like, one, at, one at a time? Well, I think it was much easier. I think somehow I, I uh, had enough, uh, I don't know whether you can call it respect or, or that people want to listen to me and give me time and thought that uh, the things that I wanted to do uh, together with them uh, is worth doing. At that time, I would say I was a bit misguided because I my, my view of religion then was quite different than what I see today, that, that I uh, see religion as today. Then I thought uh, because of uh, my situation being a bit of a reclusive. I, I was looking at religion more from a spiritual point of view and uh, almost uh, a very black and white understanding of, of Islam uh, because I was looking for peace after my father passed away and therefore it's all uh, and rejecting uh, things that are around me, things that could have made me happier uh, if I had just been myself. And because of that, I did many things which I think, uh, which I think, uh, if I had the right frame of mind, I wouldn't have done. Or so I had the right guidance, I wouldn't have done. For example, uh, at, at the time when I was president there, there was an inter-varsity game, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was something that people have been doing for years. But uh, I thought it was the wrong thing to do because. Uh, men and women were mixing together and I said, oh, this is not Islamic, so we should cut it off. Mm -hmm. And they actually cut it off, you know, they, <laughs> they believed me and they cut it off. And looking back, I said, what were they thinking of listening to me, you know, because, just because I, I look like I know something, just because probably I was the top students in my class, I'm credible. And I think this is one of the big problems of, of a society. Never let a particular person, a particular group of people dictate. Uh, and stop you from thinking. Unfortunately for me, uh, even the teachers who work with me endorse what I said, and I think that was wrong. And I think uh, we must let people go through their life, go through their journey, discover Islam on their own accord, and respect them for it. Because there will be many around us with different levels of understanding and, and practice of Islam. There will be even those who don't pray, and we must embrace them. There are even those who are not Muslims, and we must embrace them. We must be able to live with everybody, no matter how close or how far they are from what we perceive as uh, Islamic practices, and uh, show them the love and rahmah of a Muslim. And I got that wrong when I started. I, I thought everybody must behave in a particular way. 
and we must mold people that way. And you are not that way, you are not good enough. And and I think I think looking back then as a student, it was a, a good mistake to make that I learn now uh, and I discover this is not the way I do. And actually, that experience helped me later on when I went to Perdaus. And when Perdaus was given uh, to a group of friends to basically take over and run. Perdaus uh, was an even harder organization to run because it had good will with, with the community and it had a certain view of what it should be. Uh, but we decided that because of my own experience running and, and, and hopefully better comprehension of Islam, and what it means. I, I, I gathered my friends in Perdaus to say that Islam, if we believe Islam is good for us and we want to be good Muslims, then we must work and do things beyond Muslims, beyond Malays and beyond Singapore. And actually that kind of paradigm shift moved Perdaus to want to do things not just for Muslims, but for everybody. And uh, from that kind of paradigm, we actually founded the CRD. And now it's a national organization which gave Muslims a conduit to do good for people who not only are not Muslims, but not even in Singapore. And I think that shift of paradigm is very important. If not, we will always be uh, very exclusively me and for myself or for ourselves and for nobody else. Mm. And then nobody feel the love of Islam. Mm. Okay, when you form NTIMS, what, what do you see NTIMS role within NTIMS? I would say as a student, we, we had very narrow view of what we are capable of. Firstly, we didn't have money. So we went around looking mm. for money. I think you all see are looking for money all the time. <laughs> and there was a time when actually uh, the Libyan government offered us $400,000. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But I thought it was fortuitous that we didn't take it. We asked, we went to Muiz and asked them, can we take this money? And uh, Muiz told us, Look, don't take money from foreign governments because they come with string attached. And uh, we took the advice, we didn't take it. And, and today you see in many parts of the world, when people give money even to build mosques, they don't just give to a mosque. They give the imam and they give the teachers. They make sure that that mosque teach whatever doctrine they want to. And that's why for the longest time in Singapore, we don't allow uh, whatever religion, not just for Islam, money from overseas because we don't want foreign conflicts, foreign problems to invade us through this money. And uh, so while we were poorer, uh, organization that I think we are better off. Otherwise, you guys will all be connected with the Libyans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the other thing, of course, uh, in that narrow view of what Islam was, we, we conducted very simple uh, uh, activities. Uh, uh, some of which were uh, religious talks and personalities uh, in Singapore. Uh, to come and share with us their view of Islam, not necessarily Muslims, but also people who we trust our uh, good, good Muslim brothers or sisters. And we also try to reach out and bring, sorry, bring uh, uh, students, particularly those from the uh, orphanage, to come to university. Hopefully, for them to be inspired by people like themselves, like my, like me, who doesn't have a father, uh, who didn't have a father then. Uh, who, to to uh, be inspired that yes I can be like him I can go to university and I want to be like him and we bring them from Daru uh, Daru Islam down to the campus brought them around the campus and show them what a university life could be like and uh, so those are the kind of things uh, we do and uh, small small little things that I think. Uh, what started us to get together. And the last thing I remember doing for, for the Muslim society was to get a bus for the brothers to start to go to the mosque to uh, do their Friday prayers. Yeah. Uh, so what were the uh, past initiatives that you started to together the Muslims of India to come? I, I, I think there weren't many big things that I initiated except 
one, to form the society, mm -hmm. two, to get enough people to form the society, and three, to just be able to muddle along to make sure that the society continues to function through events like uh, uh, talks and uh, bringing uh, uh, maybe the poor or the orphans to the university to be inspired. Very simple things. I think it was difficult to rally the very few people who are already, who are already struggling with their studies to, uh, to, to contribute and do something even more. Uh, you have to recognize that those days, I mean, in a cohort of say 2,000 uh, engineers, there were only six Muslims. Yeah. <laughs> it was that difficult to find a Muslim, it's that difficult to get to find a Malay Muslim, for example, in a university. And uh, uh, today, or the, when I went there maybe more than 10 years ago, I saw 300 of you. I said, wow, this is really a, a big achievement for our community to be able to sit there and be part of a university cohort. It was not like that when, uh, when we went to university. Very rare and very few of us, and we don't have much time to spare, and we all want to pass our exam and we focus on basically passing the exam. Okay, over the years, an organization will tend to evolve. So they, what is one thing, one constant that you think should be constant throughout the evolution of a society? Well, as, as societies go, what they have over time is to build a heritage, uh, a reason that why they exist, and to pass on that to the next batch of people to continue that heritage. Because heritage is something uh, people are proud of and can connect to. And uh, by now, uh, about 30 years after the first founding of NTIMS, there must be something about NTMS that not only will inspire the new ones to come and join, but actually inspire for those who have left to continue to want to contribute because they must have a sense, that sense of belonging. And heritage gives you that sense of belonging. And if you don't have that, then people will just come in and out, and then they're done with you. And I think that would be a massive failure of an organization that that, that, that So I hope that uh, NTIMS think about what is it that they have built over the years that becomes an identity that alumni will be proud of and want to contribute to it. It could be money, it could be time, it could be expertise. You now have a few thousand people who have passed through you, and it will be a tragedy that all they did was pass through you and not come back and try to build even a bigger heritage for the society. If every one of us just gave a thousand dollars, just a thousand dollars, you don't need money for the rest of your existence, I think. <laughs> That's enough. So you, you have to think around how to prevent people who have passed through, how to use their experience, their life, uh, to remodel what the society stands for. But it has to evolve. However, there are things that should not change because of this value system. Uh, you have to move the value system slowly, like I did for, for Pertels, to move it towards something that uh, is meaningful, uh, contextually correct, and impactful, not just for the Muslims, but for the people the Muslims are supposed to affect. So, as an example, uh, if, you, if you are supposed to be a good Muslim, in that broad sense of the word, does it mean you just bring people to do prayers? Does it mean you get to iftar together? Does it mean you just share the latest YouTube video on your particular uh, lecturer? Or is it the ability of people who have arrived at university with immense intellectual capacity to also delve in this, uh, to, to be able to acquire knowledge in a different different realm than what they're studying for in university and then contribute from that that ability, that intellectual capacity and be able to uh, present Islam, represent Islam in the most wholesome and beautiful way. 
Because unfortunately for us today, the Islam has been uh, hijacked by people who project a very brutal form of Muslims. People who slaughter their own brothers. People who, 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 who take women uh, as hostage and then become their slaves. This is living like 1400 years ago. How can this be something we represent as Islam? So, depending on the context, depending on, on the need, our intellectual uh, capital that we have in you, in universities, must come out and think how you bring that back, the mercy of Islam that caught people to become Muslims in the first place. We have a big responsibility.